Hi, and welcome back to this, the third episode of my Insta Frankenroid. Taking a Polaroid land camera, in this case a Polaroid 100, hacking it, chopping it, putting an Instax camera back onto it so it can shoot Instax film. Now, in the last episode, found out that my film plane was about seven millimeters too far away from the lens plane to reach infinity focus. I can't do much about the film plane, but I can move the uh, lens plane. So what I'm gonna do now is remove this old hacked Polaroid film standard, measure it all up, draw a new one in CAD with the attachment plane for the lens seven millimeters further back, print it, and try it out. First thing I need to do is remove this sheet steel part here at the bottom, by which the focus mechanism moves on. One screw, which you can see down in here. For that I'll need a smaller screwdriver. It's quite loose on this camera. And then there's this bolt here. To be careful, there's a spring washer and a normal washer backing that up. So once that bolt's removed, you can now gently remove all the other parts which is so let's design a new um, slim standard for the uh, for the Polaroid I want a flat surface here for the lens to sit against but I've got features which need to be both in front of that plane and behind that plane so to make that work I'm going to need to make this in two parts I've now printed my first replacement attempt. I've got a, two cutouts in here to allow the lens um, shutter release mechanism to move and also the shutter cocking mechanism to move. This looks like it's a good fit. This shutter cocking mechanism looks like the, the slot I've cut will fit nicely. The shutter release mechanism's looking quite good. The problem I've got on this first attempt is that we don't have enough space here at the top for this flash XM sync um, switch. And we also don't have enough space at the bottom for the uh, ap aperture drive lever. So I'll re have to redraw this part, making the whole thing just a little bit a little bit wider in this direction, and then making some cutouts to allow those parts to move. The 3D printer is currently printing the rear part of the lens mount system. Next up, we need to mount this lens standard onto the camera. The design does sort of pick up the original design features from Polaroid with those kind of curves and the flat pieces. That's kind of what I was aiming for. As expected, the bellows are now going to be pulled down somewhat. Uh, that was a deliberate decision, as I talked about before, to try and center the lens better onto the actual photo. But it does have the effect of pulling on the 
pulling on the bellows. Oh bother, I just dropped my focusing cartridge with the ground glass in it. Here's our next attempt at making a piece of uh, ground glass. I did get some instruction on after the last video. One thing was make a nice deep scratch. Okay, let's see if this works. Yeah, not too bad. I'll also cut off another little piece to use as the lap because I saw a video and it said to lap glass against glass. It seems like it probably works better. Okay, that seemed to work. Just use hot glue to put my piece of glass onto this piece of wood. Once again, we'll use the same method to make the carborundum lapping compound. ground glass came out looking quite nice. I'll just use this diamond lapping or sanding block just to take off the sharp edges. Next up let's glue the ground glass into its frame again. So I want the, the ground glass surface to be facing the lens. That's now bodged together well enough that I can go up and try testing this against infinity to see whether I've moved this lens back far enough to actually get infinity focus. So to do that I'll be using my ground glass cartridge. I was actually lucky when I when I glued this together for some silly reason I glued the glass to the wrong side so this, this is the back side. Luckily before the glue dried I noticed the error and moved the glue moved the glass to the actual focal plane side. So it should work. To do this test I need the back open and also need the lens held open in B. So I'll open the lens and use a bit of tape just to tape it in, tape the shutter open. Here you can see my setup to test the infinity focus. This is a stand for a dial test indicator for machining. Just one of my camera clamps with a, a Arca Swiss quick change plate just held on with a G clamp. I've got a foc the system focused on a skyscraper which is off in the distance and there's my ground glass. As you can see I've put a crack in it by dropping it once again. But it looks like the infinity focus is pretty good. Here I'm using an old lens I got out of some industrial equipment as kind of a macro, macro lens for the, for the phone. And I'm trying to focus on the, the skyscraper which is on the, focused on the ground glass. And it appears that that infinity focus is about perfect. So, so the next thing I want to check is uh, close-up distance. Here you can see the setup for the close focus limit. The rangefinder is focused on that Nescafe with the camera and ground glass uh, also not being too far off. Looking at the, the focus on the ground glass, it's not perfect but it's not too bad considering. So I think I'll probably make up the final set of plastic parts and just use it like this and see how it comes out in practice. I've now printed the final, well, final prototype parts I guess. This is the, the rear part with the lens mounts and then of course the front standard. Pl 
3D printed plastic is not the most rigid thing in the world, so to try and prevent them from bowing up and getting light leaks underneath, I'm going to epoxy them together. With so the glue has now dried on the lens standard and it's time to install it. Next up we need to mount the lens. Now I've got one little hole here for the uh, X-Sync cable to go through which I'm not actually using at the moment but it gives, gets us out of the way. And the second hole here is the anti-rotation feature on the, on the lens itself. So those two both have to be aligned. And with those aligned we then put the, the lens retention ring on the back. The next part that goes on is this paper gasket. That needed to go on before the lens. Now with that gasket in place, next up is mounting the bellows to the lens standard. I'm not sure if it's going to show up on camera, but there's a light leak, I've got a torch inside, there's a light leak right here and it's obviously a pinhole in the um, bellows so I'll just fix that with a piece of tape. This was a pretty beat up old um, Polaroid 100, it uh, wasn't in great shape when I bought it. Kind of doesn't surprise me that the bellows might have a leak in them. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? So this is going to be the infinity test. Uh, I've got the camera set up once again well supported and the infinity focus. Uh, we're expecting the Danube Tower in the background to be in focus. There's a close-up of the Danube Tower. Here's the view through the, vice, uh, the Zeiss viewfinder. That is now set on, inf on infinity. Now that first test may not have been that representative because I didn't have an ND filter and outside today I needed uh, f16 at f16 at 1 500th to get a to get an exposure let's just kick that first photo out I actually needed to go into the into use a kind of a ski jacket as a dark bag to get this um, this first photo started through the kick out mechanism I think I damaged the corner of it so I did a partial start and then continued. So let's, mm, who knows whether this one was actually going to come out. I guess we'll see. For this next test, I'm looking at the closest focal range. The range finder is focused on the little statue of Paul here, but I've got a scale set up against it so we should be able to see where the lens actually focuses. This is the actual photo. As you can see from the close-up, there is some front focusing. It appears that the actual lens focal point is approximately 130 millimeters in front of the rangefinder's focal point. This front focusing is to be expected with the change from Polaroid's 114 millimeter focal length to this uh, Mamiya 105 millimeter lens. 
assuming the infinity focus is set correctly which it may not be I may need to get in there and do some shimming to get that more accurate but assuming that is set correctly to correct the front focus would require getting into the range finder and adjusting the slope of the cam to match the 105mm lens's focus characteristics. The workarounds for the front focus are either stopping down for increased depth of field, which will work quite well in, in medium distances, but if you want to take a close-up of, of a person, like a portrait, especially if you want a nice blurred background, uh, I'll probably have to focus and then just lean forward don't that extra 10 centimeters to bring the eyes into focus. I guess we'll see how well that's going to work. Any rangefinder adjustments will be the subject for future video. If you've enjoyed this series, I'd appreciate a like or subscribe. Uh, and also if you would like to share a link on Instagram or Facebook, I appreciate it. Thanks very much.